Good morning, Gateway Church. It's great to be with you. It is hard to believe that Thanksgiving week is upon us and uh, the holiday season is quickly coming. It's been amazing to see some of the lights going up already around the homes of our community. I hope things are well with you in the midst of this ongoing pandemic and the increased restrictions that seem to be heading our way. Uh, as we begin this morning, I would like to let you remind you that we have our Thanksgiving service this week on Tuesday evening at 7.30. We will be meeting in the main worship center and uh, encourage you to come and join us. We're just going to be offering some thanks, singing a brief song and heading on our way. Because of the Thanksgiving service, there will not be a Wednesday evening prayer meeting this week, but we will be meeting next Sunday in the back of the church at 9.15 for prayer before the morning worship service. Uh, thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. We appreciate the help that uh, you have been to us during this time. Uh, we need you to continue to give, and so you can put your offering in the box in the back of the church at any time. You can also go to our church website and uh, click on the word give at the top of the page, and it will lead you through the steps of doing that. You can use your bank's bill pay, or you can just send a check our way at 50 Walcott Road, Levittown, New York, 11756. Um, good morning, and it's great to be here. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of worshiping you. And Father, we are thankful for so much. We're thankful for our home. We're thankful for family. We're thankful for this nation. We're thankful, Father, for the Church of Jesus Christ. And we're thankful for the gift of love in your Son that we celebrate during this season. Father, may our eyes be fixed upon him, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised its shame, and now has sat down at the right hand of you, our Father. May your blessing be upon our worship this morning. Bring help and encouragement and healing to those that are here. May we rest in you, trust in you, hope in you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. As we turn to our time of teaching this morning, we're going to be taking a look at John chapter 13. And I have been uh, mentioning that this short series of messages as we enter into the holiday is it's a mid-pandemic, post-election, pre-Thanksgiving, pre-holiday challenge to you to become all that you can be in followers as being followers of Jesus Christ. I'd like to read from John chapter 13 as we begin this morning. It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you and have, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can study your word this morning. And this example set by Jesus moves us to try to understand how great a gift has been given to us and how great a gift we should give to others. We ask, Father, that our eyes would be open to understand your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When you think about it, um, the word service is used a lot. We go to a restaurant and we expect service. Uh, in the United States, we don't like to talk about the fact that we are servants, but God has called us to that task. Uh, we call this a worship service. Um, and I don't know whether you ever gave it, gave it any thought. Um, as I tried to look it up and say, why is it called a worship service? It may be because communion was being served. It may mean because we're supposed to come together and serve one another, but we don't give it a whole lot of thought. It's a worship service. You're going to be serving Thanksgiving dinner. And I know that you have a lot of expectations about what you expect people to do to you, but do you really want Thanksgiving and do you really want Christ Christmas to be an act of service of you to others? Uh, I grew up in a traditional Baptist church, and we did have one of those wood plaques in the corner of the uh, uh, sanctuary that had the names of everybody that was serving in the military. And uh, we were supposed to be praying for them as we saw them because they were serving our country. And so I want to talk to you about service this morning. And we're going to go to John chapter 13 and this example that was set by Jesus. Are you able to determine to serve God by serving others? It's what God wants of us. It's what he wants of us. Um, following the election. It's what he wants of us in the midst of this wearying pandemic. It's what he wants of us as we head into this holiday season when we experience a time of giving thanks and a time of giving gifts to others as we remember the birth of Jesus Christ. And so we're going to walk a pathway through this text of Scripture in John chapter 13. And there's some things that we're going to find about the circumstances surrounding Jesus' example that make it even more profound and even more compelling. The first thing is, is that Jesus is announcing to his disciples that beginning with this act of the washing of feet, he was now going to show the full extent of his love. I don't know whether you've ever given thought to that, but uh, we talk about the things that we love. We love our family, we love our husband, our wife, we love our children. But have you ever sat down and said to them, I am now going to show the full extent of my love? I love the way that it's put in there. It was the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. And this foot washing was only the beginning. It was going to end with him on the cross. People thinking that this was the greatest defeat, but... It's in Jesus' giving of his life to mankind, it was the greatest gift and the greatest victory. And in the, his service, he says, I now show you the full extent of my love. Have you ever determined to show anyone the full extent of your love? I'm grateful that the scriptures tell us greater love hath no one than this, than he would lay down his life for his friends. 
And there are many of us that have considered what opportunities might arise in some circumstances that we would sacrifice our lives, whether it be in the military, whether it be in public service, whether it be for our family. But the reality is that very few of us are compelled at any given time to ask that question, how can I so serve that I show people the full extent of my love? And if this is the greatest commandment, that we love God with all of our heart and we love our neighbor as ourself, then it ought to be something that we review and something that we rehearse frequently. How can we show God the full extent of our love? How can we show the church of Jesus Christ the full extent of our love? How can we show people more and more how much we love them? One of the reasons that marriages fail is, is that we stop showing the full extent of our love. We stop trying to find those ways that we can show even more than we did the day before how much we love them. But this is what set Jesus apart. This is what makes this example so compelling for the Christian. Having loved his own who were in the world, he healed the sick. He taught his disciples. He sacrificed what he had. And uh, I was listening to a message by a group of preachers this week and they were discussing what the church really needed. And the one preacher mentioned that Jesus was a person who was willing to be interrupted. And have you ever thought about um, your life that you live? Do you show love by being willing to be interrupted? And are you willing to follow through on those interruptions? Uh, Jesus was teaching his disciples and the little children were trying to be brought by their parents to be blessed. And the disciples said, we don't have time for this. And Jesus said, let the little children come. There was the four friends that brought their paralyzed uh, and sick friend to Jesus. Couldn't get in through the door, so they tore a hole in the roof and let him down. You can just imagine what the crowd inside thought. Why are these people interrupting what was going on? But Jesus, so moved by their faith, healed the man. Are you willing to be interrupted? We don't like people in our way during the holiday season. We don't like people in our way during a pandemic. We just don't like people in our way. But have you ever been willing to show the full extent of your love? Are you willing to spend time with those that others have cast aside? Jesus was willing to touch the sick that no one else would touch. Jesus was willing to meet with the sinners and the tax collectors. If you know from Caleb's series that he began in Luke chapter 15 and is going to be continuing in the, the parable and story of the lost son, but Jesus comes to seek and to save that which is lost. God comes to seek and save that which is lost. And having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. And you need to look way beyond the washing of the feet in this passage. You need to look to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. The second thing that we find about this story is, is that it wasn't just a typical day. We hope that our days are normal, we get up in the morning, we see the beauty of the sunrise and the warmth or, or the freshness of the air around us, and we just hope we can go to work and everything goes fine and come home and there's no tragedies. Uh, but on this day, uh, it, there was something going on that was going to make it a day that was far worse than many others. It would be the day that things would be set in motion that would cause Jesus to be arrested and crucified in the most gruesome of deaths, and then buried without any hope of ever coming to life again in the minds of the disciples and those that he loved. It just wasn't a typical day. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. I'm a firm believer in not giving the devil more than his due. I think there's enough problems caused by the sinfulness of mankind uh, without the devil getting involved. But when the devil does get involved and he seeks to destroy the very work of God in every sense, he wants to destroy the work of the church. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy our nation that has given freedom for people to worship in the way that they have worshipped for the last two centuries. The devil wants to destroy the things that are around us. He wants to use everything that's at his disposal to get people to turn away from God. And in this particular night, it was one of those nights when the devil was being active and he had entered into Judas Iscariot and was going to lead him to betray Jesus. It wasn't the only thing that was out of the ordinary. 
uh, that night when you would hope that the disciples had pretty much learned the message of love that Jesus had explained to them. And it was after he had even washed their feet in this act of service, we find them arguing over who's the greatest among the disciples and who's going to sit at the right hand of the Father. And it was an argument that we find from the Gospels had arisen at various times, that they were always jockeying for position, always looking for how they could be a little bit better than anyone else. And that's one of the problems with our society today, is the devil has entered into the situation and he is orchestrating things to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. He is orchestrating things. But the, fine, the thing that's interesting is, is that in the very things that he orchestrated, he brought about the death of Jesus Christ, which was the greatest victory for mankind. So don't be discouraged when you see the devil's fingerprints around. Know that God has overcome the world. Know that Jesus has said that believers need to be overcomers. And we do it by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of God, and by the word of our testimony. And so, when we look at the need for service, just as Jesus showed the full extent of his love by beginning this act of sacrifice of all that he is, uh, it wasn't just a typical day, but you would think now was the time for strength. Now was the time for boldness. Now was the time to show the Roman Empire who was king. But Jesus chooses an act of humility. Uh, on Thanksgiving, it's interesting that we seek to show acts of humility. We should take time to give thanks to our God. We should take time to ask God for his help along the way as we continue through our life. And so we serve. We serve Thanksgiving dinner. Are you getting ready to serve it with humility? Are you getting ready to serve it in a way that will show the full extent of your love for others? And if it's not the Thanksgiving dinner, is it anything else that you're going to do over the next two months that's going to show somebody the full extent of your love? We have not loved enough. We haven't loved our wives enough. We haven't loved our husbands enough. We haven't loved our children enough. And we need to ask ourselves some questions. Father, I need rest, but how can I rest up so that I can love some more? And so Jesus would choose an act of humility. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. He had the confidence that with everything that was going to happen in the next 24 hours of his life, and then leading up to the resurrection a few days later, he knew that he had come from God and was returning to God. He had this confidence. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. The act of washing feet was common in Jesus' day, and it was usually done by the servants. It was done by the lowest person in the house to welcome people as they come in. I love the pictures of welcome, and so Jesus does this act of humility rather than an act of strength. This act of humility would lead him all the way to the cross, uh, Pilate would say to Jesus, don't you know that I have the authority over you? And Jesus said, you would have no authority over me if it wasn't given to you by God the Father. Jesus, in his confidence, rather than choosing the pathway of strength, says, I will choose the pathway of humility, and he washed his disciples' feet. We need to serve one another. We need to love one another. We need to show one another the full extent of our love. Have you thought about some act of humility that you can do during the Thanksgiving season? Some way that you can serve others? Uh, it's not a matter of what anybody else in this room is going to do. Thank you for everybody that has prepared a shoebox for Compassion International. It's one of the easiest things that you can do. Thank you to everybody that gave a gift to ABBA Ministries uh, to help those that are um, underprivileged to have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for that. But have you thought about some ways that you can serve your community, that you can serve your family, that you can serve others? We spend too much time being frustrated because of what we have lost. Jesus was getting ready to lose it all. And on this night, the night when you would have thought that it was time since he only had a few hours left to live, he would address his bucket list 
of all the great things that he would do, he instead chose an act of humility, and he washed the disciples' feet. The next thing we realize from Jesus' story is, is that not only was he going to serve others, but you have a need to be served. And so what we find is, is he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Simon Peter had great respect for the Lord. And, and his whole heart was, is, Lord, I should be washing your feet, not you washing mine. But Jesus replied, you do not realize what I am doing, but later you will understand. And that's a profound thought. There's not enough of us that are willing to admit that we don't realize now what's going on. Many of us have doubts about the Christian faith. Many of us have questions about the world around us and why on earth is God doing the things that he's doing. But the reality is that um, we just need to humbly step back and like Jesus was asking Simon Peter, just say, I don't understand fully what you're doing, Lord, but may you have your way with me. And so in the Lord's prayer, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, Jesus, and Peter said, no, uh, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And there would come a profound time in Peter's life when he finally realized what Jesus had accomplished on the cross, what Jesus had accomplished through the resurrection. And if you ever wonder what the church is all about, we uh, have a lot going on around us. Um, but the thing, the bottom line is this, there is a story about the Son of God coming to earth. That's what's so beautiful about Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. It tells the story that there is a God who is worthy of our thanks and praise and honor. It tells the story of a God that so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. It's the story of a God that was willing to sacrifice painfully what was most precious to him in order to secure the salvation of others. Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And God says, unless he cleanses you, you have no part in eternal life and no part with him. And that's what this message is all about. But the victory was in God's power saying, I have finished the work. I'm now going to raise Jesus from the dead. And so the church is all about Jesus and his offer to you. The church is about getting that message out to others. Christmas is a warm, fuzzy time. Lights are going up all around us already. And uh, I have to admit to you, I've done some of the decorating at, at home. I've already been listening to Christmas music for the past two months. Uh, just because I love what it does for my spirit and my soul as it tells the story of Jesus. But have you tried to grasp the fact that this is all about getting the message of Jesus and his gift to mankind out to those around us. I hope that you'll have an opportunity to tell others what the story of Christmas means to you. It might be your children, your grandchildren. It might be those in your community and those that are around you. But Jesus told Peter, unless I wash you, have no part with me. And Peter would go on to say, well then, uh, wash all of me. And Jesus said, this will be enough for now. You have no idea what I'm going to be doing for you on Calvary in the sacrifice of my life. Peter, in his epistles, would talk beautifully of the redemption that was given to him in Jesus Christ, the purifying work of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And if your heart is burdened with sin, it's all about Jesus. If your life is plagued and haunted by the habits and the destruction of your behavior that's tearing you apart and keeping you from God, you need to experience the washing of the water of Jesus. Unless I wash you, you have no part. You have a need to be served. Don't be so proud to think that you're going to get your life together and then offer yourself to God. You need the cleansing of Jesus. And then <clears throat> what we find is, is that the served needs to become the servant. And this is what God asks of us, that if Jesus has so loved us, so we ought to love the world. And in John chapter 13, verse 12, it says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, 
and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And the message of Scripture is clear, that because God has loved us, we're to love the world around us. And what an opportunity we have in the season that's upon us, whether it be the follow-up to the election with all of the disturbing um, actions of people around us, both in politics and in our community, the unrest of our society, you have the ability to serve others. In the midst of our daily lives and all that's going on, you have the ability to serve others. I hope that you will take joy in choosing to be a minister to others on Thanksgiving. It needs to be a day of rest and a day of recuperation. Some of us look to those days because it's our days off of work and we want refreshment. But it's also a day to serve others. And if you're not going to do it that day, you've got all the other days of the year to figure out how you can serve somebody else in love and the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have set you an example, Jesus said, that you should do as I have done for you. And so we enter into the Christmas season and you have the ability to give to others. And I hope that you'll think not only about giving to your family and giving to those that you love, <clears throat> but give to those that don't have. Give an act of service. And so will you with me, because of what Jesus has done, determine to serve God by serving others? We fully understand that there is a need for us to in determine in determination show the full extent of our love to others. Our marriages are failing because we haven't shown the full extent of our love. Our society and our homes are falling apart because it's not just a typical day. Satan is at work trying to destroy the things of God and what we think is normal. We're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. And we need to think not so much all the time about strength, but we need to think about acts of humility. Like Zechariah said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, I will build the temple in the Old Testament. And that's how he's going to build his church. Not by might, not by power, not by slick programs, not by anything else. It's all hollow if Jesus isn't there and if it's not by his spirit and if it's not by his by the acts of humility of his people. You need to surrender today to God and understand that you need to be served. You need the cleansing work of the shed blood of Jesus Christ in your life and the forgiveness every day that he gives to you. And then finally, you need to determine that now that you have been served by God, you're going to serve others. And it's as simple as this as we close the program this morning. You need to bow your heads now and ask this question. God, I believe that you have washed me clean. So who am I supposed to love in the, the month that's ahead of me? Who is it that I'm to serve with an act of humility? Whose feet am I to wash? Who am I to give a gift of humble service to? And I also want you to ask the harder question, Lord, who is it that I'm to show the full extent of my love? I've been giving it out in bits and pieces, thinking that there's just a little bit to give, and I haven't given enough of my love away. I haven't given it to you, O oh Lord, and I haven't given it to those around me. Help me, Father, to determine today. Let's pray. Help me, Father, to determine today how I can give of myself to you and to others. I pray, Father, that as you, through Jesus, demonstrated to us the full extent of your love, I pray that we would show the full extent of our love to others. I pray that it would bring help and healing to our families. I pray that it would bring help and healing to our nation. I pray that it would bring help and healing to the church of Jesus Christ as we seek your face. Father, may we serve others. May we determine to love you by serving others. And I pray this this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. There has not been a song over the last two years that have so expressed my heart toward God is this song, Goodness of God, and I hope that it will be your song as well.
during this Thanksgiving and Christmas season as we serve one another. Mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing The goodness of God And all my life You have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire The darkest night You are close like me I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered down, I give you every. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. God, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's pray. And now may the God of peace bring you all joy and peace in believing that you might abound in that peace through the power of his Holy Spirit. And we pray that hope would be yours. And we ask these things in Jesus' name as we go to serve others. Amen. <laughs>